top fertility myths breaking them down. Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford, and today I am breaking down some top fertility myths. These are questions I get asked all the time. These are old wives' tales and things you may hear. So I am a board certified OBGYN and REI. I am here to educate you about your fertility and your body. This is National Fertility Awareness Week, so you are getting a video every day. Let's dive in. As always, if you want to learn more about your body and support the channel, please consider subscribing so we can share our message together. Okay, well, let's just dive into some of these top myths. Number one, being on the birth control pill for too long will delay your fertility. This is not true. I'm gonna start by saying I have a whole video on this one if you wanna go learn more about this one topic. But what we wanna know is that the pill works to stop you from ovulating. You're still having eggs come out of the vault, you're not ovulating them, they just all die. A normal process just on goes. When you stop the pill, it's very short acting because if you miss one pill, you could ovulate and get pregnant. So when you stop the pill, the normal processes resume. The problem here is that number one, sometimes you had other issues and you were put on the pill because it served multiple purposes or nobody really did a good enough evaluation to figure it out. So if you have an ovulation disorder and you had regular periods on the pill because that's what the pill does, now you may not know or you may not have any idea that you have this underlying problem. So rule of thumb, if you stop the pill and you don't have a period or you have irregular cycles by three months, you should go get an evaluation. However, studies about if the pill impacts your fertility, it's not true. By six months of trying to get pregnant, the rate of conceiving was the same in people who had taken the pill or who had not taken the pill. So there was no higher incidence of infertility. I will use a little extra star. If you use the continuous birth control pill method that I love, meaning you never have a period, you're constantly suppressing that lining with daily progesterone, and you may have a very thin lining that takes a few cycles to come back. So I usually do recommend you stop the pill about three months before you're ready to get pregnant so you can monitor those cycles still use though barrier methods or other methods of protection if you're not ready to be pregnant okay myth two boxers are better than briefs when trying to get pregnant the theory here is that if you're wearing briefs is it compressing the testes and rising the temperature inside um, the testicle which can impair sperm production we do know that heat is bad the testes are outside the body for a reason so that's why we don't like if you're trying to get pregnant frequent sauna use sitting in a hot tub that can actually impair sperm production but boxers or briefs does not matter so you can wear whatever is the most comfortable. Similarly in this is laptops can impair sperm function. This is actually true. So because the heat from a laptop is external, it's not just closer to your own body temperature, if you sit with a laptop in your lap, you actually can have too much heat to the testes. So I always recommend my patients, you know, always work at a desk or have laptop off of their lap. Okay, the more sex you have in your fertile days, the more likely you are to get pregnant. This is true. So you get conflicting advice when it comes to getting pregnant, meaning should you have sex every other day or sex every day? And this is always based on your own sex practices. The more sex you have, the more sperm is getting to the area that it needs to be and the better. So you do not feel like you have to restrict back or save up sperm for the right time. So if you're sex everyday people, that's fine. If you're sex every other ish day, you don't even have to track your cycles. If your periods are coming well, you're getting enough sperm there around ovulation. However, if you really want to try to optimize getting pregnant, you're going to try to have sex the day before and the day you ovulate. And because we don't exactly know when this is, the more sex you have in that window, fine. So do not feel like you have to restrict sex. The big caveat here is that some couples don't have that much sex. Then they start having sex and then there's a mismatch and they get burnt out and they don't want to have any more. And now it's the day they're ovulating. So make sure you're just being mindful about what works for your own sexual practices. Position matters. This is False. Any position that gets the job done, which means sperm into the vagina, is going to have the same rate of conception. So choose whatever is going to work for you. What about after the egg is released, it can be fertilized for two days? I think this myth comes because we tell people to have sex the day before and the day they're ovulating, so they think it's this two-day window, but the egg only has 24 hours where it can be fertilized. So it's a really, really short interval. However, sperm can live a little bit longer. So sperm can live in the cervical mucus and in the cervix and kind of hang out and wait for the egg. Most sperm don't, most of them kind of swim through, but this is why if you have sex before the egg is released, there's then some sperm there ready and able to fertilize that egg because the egg has a very, very short 
opportunity of fertilization. Saliva is the most fertility friendly lubricant if you're trying to conceive. I get why people think this. This is false. This one, people think, okay, well, it's natural and natural is better, but natural is not always better. So when it comes to this, saliva is not the right like pH and it changes things inside the vagina and it makes it a less hospitable place for sperm. So if you're going to use lubricant, number one, if you don't need lube, do not use any. No lubricant improves your fertility. Number two, if you need lubricant, that's fine. But then you want to pick like a water-based lubricant. A good one is pre-seed that you might find over the counter. Another myth is you need to have an orgasm. I think this was thought of like the contractions help the sperm and egg get together. And that's just not true. Female orgasm is wonderful. However, it is not necessary to achieve a conception. So do what works for you. Okay, men don't have a biological clock. This is false. It is just a longer biological clock than women have. So when we think about the biological clock, most people refer to this as a time when your fertility starts to decrease. For most women, we usually say that's around age 35 because this is the time where you start to see an increase in genetic abnormalities and miscarriage and a decrease in the probability of getting pregnant each month. However, most people can still get pregnant after age 35 becomes markedly harder to get pregnant after the age of 40 and specifically the age of 42. And that's because most eggs are genetically abnormal at this stage. However, for men, it's much later. We do start to see some changes in genetics when men are over age 50 trying to get pregnant, but so they obviously have a much longer availability of getting pregnant. Sperm can last many years past that, whereas almost all women are going to be out of eggs into their upper 40s or early 50s. But you run out of viable or normal eggs much, much before that. So men do have a biological clock. It's just much later. Not fair. Okay, what about you can't get pregnant on your period? This is a good one. So for the most part, you shouldn't be able to get pregnant during your period. However, you can. The act of having a period doesn't mean you're not growing an egg or ovulating. So what is happening is during, from the day you start your period, your body starts sending out FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone, to stimulate one of the eggs from that month to grow. Remember, I like the analogy, if you've got a little vault inside your ovary, a group of eggs comes out of the vault, one is stimulated by FSH to grow and ovulate, the rest die. When you're bleeding on your period, FSH is being sent out recruiting that next egg. When that next egg starts growing, it makes estrogen and that is supposed to stop the bleeding. However, it doesn't always work that way. And so some people have really long periods or some people have very irregular cycles. And so you certainly can be having a mature egg and still have some spotting or be on your period. Remember that sperm can live up to five days in the reproductive tract. So if you have sex on your period, but you ovulate the next day or so, it doesn't mean you won't get pregnant. So it might be less likely, but it is possible. So that is not a good form of birth control. Stress doesn't affect your ability to get pregnant. This is false. Stress can impact things. And not that I want people to stress about being stressed, but I have a whole video so that we can understand how stress in the modern world impacts our entire life and our body and our hormones. This is certainly something that there are some stressors you cannot change, but there may be some things that you can change and you should at least be mindful and willing to look at your life and do a reset about what could help you and ask for help when you need it. Hope you enjoyed some of these top fertility myths. These came from the What to Expect website, so I will link that in the show notes. As always, appreciate your support so much on this channel as we are growing. Feel free to follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or check out the podcast as a woman. Thanks, friends.